Tia Mari went viral recently for saying that she cannot pick up the phone to call her sister because they're just not that close anymore. She kind of backtracked, <laughs> but it was all on her reality show, which I will not be watching. But I think it's helpful, the clips of her talking about her relationship, you know, how early it started, basically feeling like she didn't have any choice and how important I think it is for women to own that we do have choices. And that's one of the beautiful things about being a woman in 2024. Like I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Nobody has their foot on my neck forcing me to do things. I can make my own money. That we can learn some lessons from Tia Maori's mistakes. One of the first lessons we can learn from Tia Maori is the importance for women to be alone. I did a video on Nicki Minaj about how to decenter men, like the importance of decentering men, because Nicki Minaj came out and said, I used to love Nicki. Okay. She's a hot mess now, but I used to love her. Nicki Minaj has said that she's never been single. Like since she was 16, she's been in a long-term relationship, like just jumping from man to man. And okay, maybe after Nas, you could have sat down. Tia Maori has been in a relationship since she was like 18, 20 or something like that. I think they got married when she was 25 and apparently he was her first everything. I do think there is beauty in dating, but I, I don't want to discount the people who met their person in high school and are high school sweethearts or the people that met in college and are college sweethearts. You don't have to date a lot of people to find the love of your life. If you're in tune with love and this is the person you want to be with and grow with. Okay. Like that's fine. But if you are making decisions for other people based on not wanting to disappoint people, not wanting to have premarital sex and then not be with the person, all of those things are fear based and will often lead you to regretting the decision that you made and divorcing your person after 14, 16, however long they were married, uh, divorcing the person because they were never really your choice to begin with. It's what you thought you should be doing for other people. So I strongly recommend a period of being alone. If you are a woman in your thirties, you're not married. Um, you're not, you're not dating anybody right now. I do recommend to stop pursuing it, right? Actually be single and enjoy your singlehood for a period of time. I'm not saying a long time. I'm saying three, six months, a year of you just enjoying yourself. And it could be longer than that, right? I, when we start getting into the five years, seven years, you've been celibate. I think we've, we've entered into unhealthy territory of how you've closed yourself off to love and partnership. And you're not really like enjoying your singlehood. You are giving up. I, I, I really think, right? So a period of time, somewhere between three months, three years, more than that, I think I would be concerned. If you're saying you want to be in a relationship, but you haven't gone on a date for seven years. Okay. Be alone, practice being alone and enjoying your own company, not being entertained by anybody, not, uh, you know, messaging anybody, not going on dates, just really enjoying yourself, dating yourself. I think dating yourself is a beautiful thing and enjoying your own company. I think it's super, super important. I, I think it's so, I notice every time somebody says, I like myself, like, I like my own company. I like being alone because so many people cannot say that. I think it's important for you to be able to say, when I'm just alone with my thoughts, I'm good. When I'm out to dinner by myself, I'm good. When I'm doing my hobby, I'm good. I want you to learn to get good with dealing with yourself. The second lesson you can learn from Tia is that you have choices, right? In actually every single thing you do in your life, you have a choice. If you are an adult woman, you have a choice in everything, where you live, what you do for work, who you're with, you have a choice. But the questions I want you to ask yourself are, do I like myself? Am I doing things that I enjoy? And do I really want to be in a relationship or do I really want to be in this relationship? Ask yourself the question. Part of what women who feel they don't have choices do is they never pause to ask themselves, is this what I want? Am I doing what I want or am I just doing what I think I'm supposed to be doing? Most women just sort of get married and have kids on like autopilot. Never really pausing to say, wait, do I want kids? Most women do want kids, but I think it's important to ask yourself if this is really what you want, just to have that level of awareness. Oh yeah, 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 I want kids. Do I really want to get married? Yes, I want to get married. 
Or if the answer is no, that's fine too. But then you have to deal with the pressure from your friends, society telling you that you're supposed to be doing this one thing, that women are only good for this. You know, they subtly say it, and in other words, overtly say it, that you're supposed to be partnered with a man in order to have value. It's not true. If you want to be partnered with a man, I think that's a beautiful thing. Partnership, romantic relationships are so special and so loving and having this one person that is your you know lover in all the ways is a beautiful thing but just because it is a beautiful thing doesn't mean you can't experience your life in also other beautiful ways you do not have to be in a relationship you do not have to be in the relationship you're in now i wouldn't advise you to make any rash decisions but i just want you to sit pause and reflect on what you really want if you really like yourself and do you like the way your life is going Next lesson is stop people pleasing and sacrificing yourself for others. I think it's a wonderful thing to be thoughtful, to be considerate, but when you start anticipating others' needs, they didn't ask you for it, the money, the help, and you're just doing it for people at the detriment of yourself, it's time to stop, okay? People pleasing is seeking your happiness and validation from other people. Like you need other people to approve of you in order for you to feel good about yourself. You have to recognize that that's what you're doing in order to stop it. You have to admit it. Oh my gosh, I've been wanting my mom to say good job. I've been wanting her to tell me that she likes the way I'm living my life. She don't have to tell you, okay? Nobody has to approve of the way you're doing your life for you to live it. Once you realize that you are engaging in people-pleasing behavior, you ask yourself, what do I want? And then you focus on pleasing yourself. Yes, we want other people to be proud of us. We want other people to enjoy the fruits of our labor and to celebrate us, but we can't require it as a means of going through life. Like, I'm not going to feel good unless somebody tells me I'm doing a good job. No, 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 no. The baseline is you feel good. You enjoy your life. You create standards for yourself that are enjoyable, right? You decide what you deem as impressive. And then anything that people around you who love and care about you, if they genuinely do, if they're not codependent, then they are genuinely going to celebrate you. If they don't, then it's time to set boundaries and get those people out of your life. And then speaking on codependency, one of the lessons I think is really important is women learning how to self-regulate their own emotions. What people often do when they look around and realize, oh my gosh, I didn't really choose my life. It's because they've been looking for other people to make them feel good. And they've been thinking that it's their job to make other people feel good. If you think you have the power to make somebody feel good, good luck, girl. You'll be climbing uphill endlessly because we cannot make people feel emotion. We can do loving and supportive things for other people, but we can't make them feel like worthy or good enough or happy. People have to choose those feelings for themselves. And so do you. You have to learn, like, how do you deal with triggers? I would strongly encourage like adaptive coping skills. One of those positive things that you're doing, whether it's meditation, prayer, going to church, talking with a friend, uh, reading a book, relaxing, meditating. Did I say already? Um, going to a spa. Like there's so many wonderful things, loving things you can do for yourself to relax, to reduce your triggers, to regulate your own emotions that you can do outside of another person. Like you don't require other people to make you feel good or to calm you down. You have the capacity for you. And so you're able to, if you're feeling sad, feel the sadness, but not let it take over months of your life where you're, you're losing productivity. If you need to feel sad, let the feeling be there. Experience it. Don't try to push it away or run away from it because then you'll be fighting sadness for a while. And usually it, it like rises up with an aggression that might come out to other people in anger. If you need to be feeling anger, anger is the emotion of action. What is it that you need to be doing? Who do you need to be standing up for? You figure out what are your particular needs? What are your feelings telling you? And how can you calm yourself down or cope with the difficulties of life? Because there's always going to be something, whether it's a minor thing or a major thing, there's always going to be something. And you have to learn to manage it on your own and not require other people. And then also learn it's not your job to manage anybody else's emotions either. That's their job to do. You can be loving, you cannot fix it for them. And the last lesson from Tia is to learn to boost your own self-esteem, especially so you won't be swayed by the opinions of others. So Tia had said that she logs in to the social media and reads the comments. I mean, 
I read my comments, but like my comments are like 99% positive and maybe other people's comments are mostly positive too, but she hyper fixates on the negative comments. When you boost your self-esteem, which you do by building your self-confidence, they're kind of intertwined, separate but intertwined. You do this by setting goals and then doing it, doing what you say you're going to be doing. At this point, it's important to set goals that are challenging but doable. Any goals that are impossible are actually going to lower your self-esteem because then you'll feel like, oh, nothing is good enough. I'm never going to make it. I should just give up, right? That's when you set a goal too high and you're like, ah, I'm never going to get to where I want to be. It's important to set realistic goals that you can achieve. I encourage people to start small so that you can build upon it. And so for like a social media thing, like you set rules around social media that can be helpful. You set boundaries for engaging with strangers on the internet so that you are not emotionally dysregulated because you read something an unhappy internet stranger said about you or your relationship. Whether it's accurate or not accurate is beside the point. When you focus on your own healing, when you focus on your own goals, when you focus on your own standards for life, and you are actually doing, living your life in the way that you want to, the, the opinions of people on the internet will become moot. You'll be like, okay, people are just projecting. That's really all they're doing. They're projecting. And maybe it, it did hit a soft spot in you. That is something that you can then learn to explore in yourself and reflect on. Like maybe there was a piece of growth in this, but I would just encourage you not to like focus a lot of time and energy on negative comments at all. Focus on how I feel about myself. I want to build my self-esteem. I want to build my self-confidence. I want to do what I say I want to do. I want to create, you know, schedules and be productive in this kind of way. See how you can do that. See how you can create the life you actually want. Because I believe that we all deserve to be living a, a joyful, peaceful, loving, happy life. Like, I think we all deserve that because you're human. You're here. You can have that if you want to. Yeah, you're going to have to work for it, but you definitely deserve it. So I hope that Tia finds the healing that she needs from life. I want to say the reality show, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure the reality show is going to help, but maybe it will inspire other people. Like she said, who she wasn't able to really see this divorce process for other people. And so maybe other people being able to see her, although I feel like we see divorce stories all the time. She might be just living in a bubble. <laughs> um, if you've gone through a thing, Somebody else, 100%, has gone through it too. You are unique, but mm, humans repeat the same patterns over and over again. And we've been living for about a millennia. So there's nothing new under the sun. There's definitely another person's story who's gone through a similar thing as you who can be of inspiration to you. So hopefully Tia inspires another woman to choose, like make choices in her benefit in life. Let me know if you have any questions. Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel. Share this video with a woman who needs to learn some lessons on how she has autonomy. And thank you for watching.